So what's up, everybody? I want you to think back maybe like eight months ago, there was an Inside EVs interview with uh, someone on, from Ford. Uh, I can't remember who. Maybe I'll, I'll have it linked in the description. I'll definitely link it in the description, though. Uh, I remember them explaining, hey, the F-150 Lightning, it actually uses different chips than any other of our stuff that we're having shortages on so yeah there's nothing to worry about so that's what it affects it's not really anything to do with ev cars it's to do with general cars and the ev cars actually tend to have higher tech chips in them and they're not the ones we've been short on it's the oh. small little chips on the things you mentioned right and, and we are prioritizing electric cars because apart from anything else we need to meet quotas because yeah these these chips are totally different and you know, I I don't think that was a dishonest claim. In fact, obviously, I'm sure there's tons of other chips that the EV needs to run on. But there's also a ton of chips that it shares with the standard EV. And we're seeing that in the latest news of just tons of lightnings have been made, yet they can't go to their homes because they're waiting for chips. So we're going to talk about that. And also, there's actually some cool news about the from EPA ratings about range in city versus highway. So what we're going to be able to break down towards the end of this video is uh, the different trim levels and how they perform in city driving uh, versus highway driving because the range is actually pretty dramatically different. So we'll take a look at all that today and let's dive into it. What we're looking at here, this is the Dearborn test track. And this is a article that I want to give credit, of course, to uh, Auto Evolution for posting this. And they, they were quick to point out the same exact thing happened with the Bronco. Uh, the same thing happened with other ICE vehicles. And it's just that <laughs> dozens and dozens of these lightnings are sitting there waiting for chips. And what's impressive is they've actually built almost 3,000 of these things so fast. Like, that's actually really impressive to me. Like, if you look at the numbers of just last quarter, what they did for mach -E's, the total, I think, was under 6,000. So if in just when was opening, like a couple weeks ago, I mean, I'm sure they were building some before. So let's say even if they've just done a thousand a week or something, we're off to a good start. That's actually a really good sign. So once this chip shortage is over with, we'll actually have lightnings and driveways soon. So that's actually pretty cool overall. So there's reports that actually... They're not only staying there, but more are being added to it every day. And uh, the article actually just keeps pulling resemblances to the Bronco, another really high demand, still in demand. Like this thing's almost branching into two years old now and still impossible to find uh, because of the same issues of the, the chip shortage and other parts delays. So uh, the Bronco literally were having dirt <laughs> piled on them uh, around Ford's plant because, well, they, didn't, they couldn't send them out. So I, I'm hoping this is like a more of a dramatic entrance and that Ford will catch up. But there's also some, you know, people upset, or at least this article anyway, really touched on the fact that Ford said, well, we're prioritizing the lightning over everything. So uh, what's the exact quote here? It says, the truck's the highest priority, but the electric truck will be higher. At least they're building them, you know. They're catching up, like they're 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 ready to go. So it, it's a plug and play sort of thing where they they'll pop chips in and send them to their homes. So we're we're really it's not like a at least they're producing, right? It'd be way different story if uh, I don't know issues were happening at the factory and there's a battery shortage. Like batteries are way harder to find, right? So if there's battery shortages or issues around that. That'd be a lot different. And while we're talking about it, there's great news on the battery front. Uh, for Farley, Jim Farley, in a recent interview, uh, said they've secured enough not only batteries but like resources for batteries uh, to have no issues and to actually hit their goal of 600,000 EVs a year. So batteries don't seem to be a concern for Ford. At least they're not letting on <laughs> to anyone that that's an issue. So. Unless there's someone who knows something that, well, the CEO doesn't even know, uh, batteries shouldn't be an issue at all. So it's literally just the same parts shortages that other ICE vehicles are dealing with that's affecting the Lightning. So uh, we won't be out of the woods at least until 2023. Both CEO of GM and Ford have said it's going to be till 2023 before any of these uh, chip shortages are going to end. So 
yeah, we're probably going to keep seeing pileups of not just the lightning. I think it's literally just because they're prioritizing the lightning that we're seeing the pileup. So it'll be all of the popular vehicles that they're making a lot of. They're just trying to keep production up, keep staff working without having to, you know, stop and wait till they have the chips. So that's all it really is. Uh, but it, but it is, but it's definitely worth talking about. So uh, now let's actually dive into the EPA estimates that we just found out about. So first up, uh, I'm, I'm going to have an Inside EVs article that I'll be re referencing for this, and, and they have some great graphics. And of course, I'll have that linked in the description if you want to check it out yourself. Uh, so what we're looking at first here is the F-150 Lightning standard range. So this would be uh, something like the XLT standard range, the Pro standard range, or even the Lariat standard range. And as we know, the combined uh, estimate that we've been looking at for a while that the EPA gave us was 230 miles. And now we see the breakdown. If you're just doing city driving, which is actually probably a lot of us, I would guess, you're going to be able to hit 253 miles of range. So if you're primarily a city driver, that's actually great news that you're actually going to get a probably a bump of what you originally thought. So you can maybe even estimate just a safe 250. Uh, you consider range loss and everything. It probably goes back to 230, maybe even 200 really quick. But hey, at least maybe uh, that's a surprise to a couple of you and you get a couple extra miles out of that. So uh, I was excited to see that number. Now highway, you, you take actually a huge hit when it goes down to 201. And that's uh, that's pretty rough. 200 is, is not a lot for long trips that are actually mostly on the highway. So that 230, that if you were calculating that at all, it's not far at all. And heck, if you're talking about towing on the highway, uh, well, this is not the vehicle for you because, well, you're, you're bound to hit only 100, if not less. So it's just not made for that. <laughs> but let's talk right into the extended range. So this is something that's available at the XLT uh, Lariat and the Platinum level. The Platinum, of course, is standard with this, and you can only get that. Now, we'll actually talk about that separately because the Platinum is so much heavier and has less aerodynamic wheels. It actually is not as good as what I'm about to read here. So, so that'll be the third thing we talk about. But if you recall the extended range for, let's say, just say the Larry and XLT here, uh, they were estimated at 320. Now the city, you're going to actually get 350 miles, which is m way more than enough. That's actually really good numbers in my opinion. I think 350 is just, it, it's really perfect. So towing, obviously we have other arguments to make there. Uh, it'll still take a hit and it, it's it's got a lot of work to do, but like just for everyday people, this 320 mile range you see here is actually, it's really great. And if we talk about the city, like we said, 200, 350 miles, that's great. Now the highway, not as amazing. 283 miles is the estimate on the highway. Still not bad at all, especially on road trips. You can definitely deal with that. So that leads us right into the third option, which of course is the platinum, uh, which is a combined of 300, which that's 20 less than the, the Lariat brother. Uh, and the city numbers you're getting on that are 326. So again, if you upgrade to the platinum, you're actually getting less range all around. You're getting way better features. It's going to look cooler and everything. But, you know, efficiency wise, you're going to get, what is this, 50? So compared to, let's just say the Lariat extended in the city, you're getting 350 on the Lariat. You're only getting 200 or 326 on the Platinum. So there is there is definitely a difference there. And then when we talk about highway, you're going from 283 on the Lariat and you're good getting uh, 267 on the Platinum. Again, it's totally going to be livable. I, I mean, I don't want to just paint with a broad brush here, but I assume most Platinum people are not using it as a extreme work truck like you're probably just going to the job site and telling people what to do if you're the platinum guy if i had to guess so the the really range hit and not being able to tow as much or whatever it might be that you lose while going to the platinum i doubt it's going to actually affect the people that are buying the platinum too much so um that's that those are the new estimates and all in all i like the news here it just kind of reminds you what to look for. You see the estimated range, and 
I guess I've never really dug into the difference between highway and city. So I, I think I learned a little on this video. And oh, a uh, quick hint for my next video. Here, one sec. Okay. So in this box, I have my charger for my lightning. So I'm going to make a, a couple videos about this unit. Um, just a, if you're still watching, I'll, I'll kind of tease it out a little bit. So I'm going to do an unboxing first and probably not an installation until maybe even a month from now, because if you're not aware, I'm in the middle of selling this house and building a new house and I don't want to install it until I'm at the new house. So we'll, we'll still dig into it and I'll tell you why I have this one, um, in my next video. So, you know what, maybe I'll link it below if you do want to check it out, but um, yeah, we'll get to that in the next video. Maybe that's a good reason to subscribe. If you want to see, uh, a possible charging solution for your lightning and man, my camera keeps losing focus today. And, uh, I, I'll explain why I got, I'm getting this over the Ford one. Um, yeah, so there'll be a good video. I can't wait to make it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to end the video. Thank you guys for watching.